Hello boys and girls, welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you joined us today. And if this is your first time, I wanna welcome you and let you know that we have programs like this every week. Come back for more program where we can worship God together. And if you are a regular, I wanna welcome you back. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy that we get to spend this time together. Without further ado, welcome to another Kids Connection program. Now, I miss you guys so much as I cannot get tired of saying, and I wish you guys were here. But since you're not here, I'm glad that you join us online. Worshiping together, no matter where we are, if we are online, if we are here at Kids Connection, at least we are worshiping God. And God deserves to be worshiped because he is amazing, isn't he? Now, I hope that you guys are home safe with mom, dad, or with grandparents. And I hope that everyone is safe. And I pray for your safety every day. Believe it or not, it's been about a month and a half since we've been doing this. That's a long time. It was even before school started. It was actually just before spring break. We went on spring break. We came back from spring break. We are in school now, in classes, online. And here we are still having Kids Connection online. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, to get another Kids Connection pro program started, we're going to sing our song of the day. And our song of the day is just the beginning of this adventure that I'm taking you on today. An adventure. I love adventures. Yes, you heard it right. I'm going to take you in an, on an adventure that hopefully it'll, it'll bring good memories to you. All right? But before we get to that adventure, let's go ahead and sing our song of the day together. Stand up, mom, dad, everyone, let's sing it. Yes, that was fun. And I remember singing the song with you guys right here at Kids Connection. Everyone was jumping around and doing all the motions. Even Kid was here with us. That was awesome. Hopefully we get to do that very soon again. Now let's bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for another beautiful Sabbath. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you because all the boys and girls are watching this program at home. Bless them. Keep them safe, keep mom and dad safe and grandparents and everyone safe. And hopefully we can come back to Kids Connection and to Vallejo Drive Church soon so we can worship God together. Bless this program as we learn more about you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wonderful. Now, speaking of worshiping God, how would you feel if we were in Kids Connection 
or if we were inside the church and all of a sudden someone was throwing rocks on top of the building and making all kinds of noises how would you feel about that hmm would you feel uh, scared <gasps> what's happening or would you feel angry why are they throwing rocks on top of the church why don't they just let us worship in today's story you're gonna hear something just like that but the the story doesn't end there it has a twist pay attention to what happened to our missionary story today i used to hate the adventists if they had evangelistic series i would throw stones on the roof One day, Sihalava watched as many beautiful young ladies walked into the Avenus meetings. An idea popped into his head. I need a good wife, he thought. Maybe I can find one here. He entered the meeting and sitting in the back surveyed his options. One girl stood out to him, and after the meeting, he introduced himself. I didn't tell her about my bad past and I started praying to impress her. We were married soon after, but instead of marriage and a beautiful wife fixing my problems, things got worse. Sihalavo had a criminal record which caught up to him, and after being found guilty of murder, he was placed on the most wanted list. Realizing his situation, Sihalavo fled to a remote forest. <laughs> He lived here for four years. I was living like an animal in the woods. I had made a mess of my life and felt like there was no hope for me. Like the prodigal son who realized he had nothing to lose, Sihalavo ventured out of the forest. Knowing his family had surely abandoned him, he went to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. An elder met him and assured Sihalavo that his place was in the church and he was always welcome. These words brought a glimmer of hope to his heart. Though the church elder was very welcoming, the other members avoided me. My past began to haunt me again, and in fear, I returned to the woods. But this time, Sihalavo took something with him to the woods, a radio. This was his only connection to the outside world, and he listened eagerly to different programs. One day, he stumbled across an AWR broadcast. The words stirred his soul and he began to fall in love with the Jesus who would forgive a sinner like him. Excited about his new friend Jesus, Sihalavo began inviting other thieves and criminals in the area to come and hear the AWR programs too. Convinced of their salvation through the blood of Jesus, Sihalavo and 15 other ex-criminals came out of the woods and were baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Together with my friends who were once thieves, we built a church where we all worshiped together on Sabbath. Today, Sihalavo also leads out in a small group study where they listen to AWR programs and pray together. Sihalavo preaches like John the Baptist wherever he goes and is often called apostle by those who know him. AWR changed my life. Through it, I found forgiveness and hope. How crazy was that? 
I loved this story and how his life got turned around. All because of Jesus' love and how the people and the missionaries of that place was able to share God's love with him. Isn't it incredible what the missionaries are doing? But they can only do that if we help them with our financial support. Don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link above here and ask them to donate to the missionaries. Thank you for your offering. Now, today, as I promised, I'm going to be taking you on an adventure. How can we go on an adventure together? Well, here's how. The adventure that I'm going to take you on is right here at Vallejo Drive Church in a Kids Connection. How are we going to do that? Well, here it is. Do you guys remember Kids Connection? Do you remember this place? Do you remember all the kids playing together? Look at the rugs. Look at the puppet stage. Do you remember all the rugs on the floor and how we all chase each other and we play together? Oh, here. Here's something else. See that? Right now we don't have a game because you guys are not here. But look. This is Kids Connection. The place where we connected with each other. The place where we had fun together. The place where mom and dad brought you every Sabbath. Remember this? Remember that mom and dad were sitting back here on these chairs as they were waiting for you to finish your, your uh, program here at Kids Connection and then go to your classrooms? Wait, speaking of classrooms, <gasps> yes, that's part of my adventure. Let's go ahead. I'm going to take you to your classrooms. And here's the first classroom that I'm taking you to. Remember this classroom? Yes, this is Miss Teresa's classroom. All the tiny tots. Here's your classroom. Do you guys miss this classroom? Do you miss being here? Do you miss playing with your friends and watching uh, the program that Miss Teresa prepared for you every Sabbath? Well, here it is. Here's your classroom. And it's got nobody in it. This classroom is waiting for you. This classroom is here. All the chairs are empty. The teacher is not here, just us. But this is a special place for you. And this classroom is going to be here until this coronavirus goes away, until all this madness goes away. And then we can come here and we can watch Miss Teresa have the program on Sabbath morning and sing with you guys and have the pianist play. Look at that, the piano is right there and nobody's playing it. This place is empty. But this place is waiting for you. This place is ready for you to come back. And we're hoping that will be soon. Now, I'm going to take you to your next classroom. Okay, our next stop is the kindergarten room. Do you guys remember this place? Yes, look at this. Look at all the chairs. Look at where the teacher sits. Look at your birthdays on the wall. Look at all the posters. Look at the signs and everything. Look at the empty chairs. The empty chairs are still here. That's your place right there. Do you remember where you used to sit? Well, I got news for you. Your chair is still here. And your chair is waiting for you. As soon as this is over, you are going to be welcome in this classroom just like before where we get to worship God together where we sing and where we praise and where where we learn more about Jesus this place is here and it's waiting for you do you miss this place I miss seeing you here let's see what our next room is and our next stop is primaries that's right primary look at your classroom look at all your cubbies look at your signs on the walls with your names look at where the teacher sat and taught you lessons look at your chairs look at the tables where you did all your activities everything is here still in place and it's waiting just for you do you guys miss this place I hope so. 
I miss seeing you here. And remember, very soon you're going to be here again. And you're going to be participating of the classroom and listening to the story of your teacher right here in this classroom. Let's go to see what's next. Yes, our next stop is juniors. Juniors, you guys remember this class? Some of you already graduated to juniors while you were out on quarantine. When you come back, you're going to be in this classroom. Look at this. This classroom is ready for you guys. This classroom misses you guys. I miss seeing you in this classroom. Remember where Mr. Michael sits to teach you the lesson and where you have your activities on this table right here? Here we are. Welcome to juniors. This classroom is not the same without you. And hopefully, you're going to be here soon. In the meantime, we just keep enjoying our classrooms online. And hopefully, you are receiving that connection that we are hoping that you receive. And you learn a little bit about God every Sabbath. And you learn how to connect with God a little bit more. Mm. Do we have another classroom? Yes, we do. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to take you to our last classroom. Let's go. And here we are. Welcome to our last classroom that we visit today. This is the beginners. This is where the little babies gather and worship God. And this classroom too is empty. Look at this. Nobody's here. The program that the teachers used to make here every Sabbath are being presented online, just like your program. And the babies, they're home with their parents. They are learning about God at home in their classroom too. Is it? With the empty chairs. You see this? But don't worry, because very soon, all these chairs are going to be filled with babies and parents. And some of the babies that were coming here, again, are not going to be here. They're going to be in a different classroom because they're growing. But the important thing is, what are we doing? What are you doing while we are on team? Are you still worshiping God? Are you going to school? Are you helping mom and dad in the house? What are you doing? I can't wait for you guys to be here and for us to worship God together. Now, let's go back to Kids Connection. Now, here we are back at Kids Connection. Remember the table? Remember the welcoming? And where all the youth were here helping you guys and, and giving you hugs every week? Well, we're back at our Kids Connection place. Here it is. And look for you guys, for you. Remember this place. This place is waiting for you. This place is waiting for you to come and worship God here again. We are going to be so happy to have you all back. And we're going to have a special program when we get to worship together again here at Kids Connection. Now, why am I showing you all this? What does this have to do with our lesson today? This adventure? Well, this adventure that we are having here at Kids Connection is an adventure that I want you to have. Do you know why? Because in our classroom today, we are going to learn about an adventure. An adventure that we are in now. What adventure is this? Well, guess what? Jesus came to earth and he died. He resurrected and he went to heaven. However, he is in heaven preparing a place for you. And you know what? That place in heaven is ready for you. That place in heaven is ready for you and I. Now, just like the quarantine, we are stuck at home. We are here on earth. 
we are not in heaven yet. But in today's classroom, we are going to learn what we are going to be doing while we are in this earth. What are we supposed to do? What are you doing while we wait for Jesus to come and take us home? But before we do that, I'm going to invite you guys to stand up again and sing our song of the day one more time. Let's sing it together. Thank you so much for singing with us again. And thank you for being a part of our program online. Thank you for being a part of Kids Connection. And thank you for waiting for us. This place is waiting for you. Kids Connection is waiting to celebrate, worship God together in this place with you. The same way that we are waiting to worship God in heaven with him. Let's pray as we close our program for today. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being our God. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. I ask that now that we are going to listen to our story in our classrooms, teacher, I, I ask that you help us to understand the story and to understand what your plan is for us on this earth. Thank you for heaven. Thank you for salvation. And thank you for being our God. Bless each child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Don't forget, tomorrow we have Kid to Kid at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This afternoon, parents are welcome to our Parents Connection, where we get to talk to each other and see how everybody's doing. Now, don't forget to check all the activities on the bottom of our page here, where it gets updated with new activities every week. And I want to tell you guys, and I want to ask you guys something. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from the kids. So if you could ask mom and dad to help all the kids write an email to us let us know how you are send that email to the church vallejo at graceunconditional.com write a little note how you're doing we want to hear from you and next week i'm gonna read it up here the story that you write us i want to hear from you are you enjoying the programs at home are you enjoying the activities what are you doing? How is your school? How are you helping mom and dad? Are you, did, you, did you get a new pet? Did you guys uh, make new, made new friends online? 
Are you guys enjoying our kid to kid program? Which by the way, last week we had some technical issues and we couldn't connect the Zoom. But tomorrow we're gonna be on with kid to kid and have another game for you guys. But I wanna hear from you. I wanna see how you're doing. And I'm gonna read some of those, depending on how many of you write us, I won't be able to read them all on on this program but next week I'm, I promise that I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna read some of your comments and how you're doing so have mom and dad help you write that email to Vallejo at graceunconditional.com and I'm gonna read those emails in the air tomorrow uh, next Sabbath here at Kids Connection thank you so much for being a part of another Kids Connection program I hope you enjoyed it now here comes your teachers lessons so don't go anywhere and by the way i want to thank all the teachers i want to take thank miss josie that helps with the beginners i want to thank miss teresa that helps with the tiny tots i want to thank miss kelly that helps with um, kindergarten as along with miss uh, patty and also mr robert and also primary with miss kathleen and uh all the teachers have been great. Thank you so much for all your, your hard work. And I hope that you guys are enjoying, um, the kids are enjoying the program as well. Uh, we're planning to do something a little bit different on the next upcoming program. So let your friends know about this program. Let your friends know about what we have here at Kids Connection. Invite them to be a part of our program. And I can't wait to have you guys right here at our Kids Connection program. Until next Sabbath, I will see you guys. Bye-bye, be good, and be safe. Bye-bye. Hi, good morning, and welcome to Sabbath School. I'm Teacher Patty, and I'm so glad to have you here. I hope you enjoy it today. All right, let's get started with our lesson. You already heard about, a little bit about what we're gonna learn about today, so, uh, we're learning about when Jesus comes back. All right, so before Jesus returned to heaven, he made a promise to all his followers. I'm gonna read a Bible passage for you. It's from the book of John, chapter 14, verses one through three. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you, with, take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Wow. So what did Jesus promise? Tell your parents, see if they're around, and, and you can tell them what Jesus promised. Jesus promised to go and prepare a place in heaven and come back for his followers so they could be with him forever. We're still waiting for King Jesus to come back. But it's important to know that if Jesus makes a promise, he will keep it. Before Jesus left the earth, the disciples asked him some of the same questions you might have asked Jesus if you had been there with him. They asked when he would return and what would happen when he returned. Let's look at some of those questions and the Bible's answers for each one. When will Jesus come again? We understand why the disciples had questions for Jesus. Of course, they did not want Jesus to leave them. But if he had to go, when would he be back? According to Matthew 24, 36, Jesus said no one on this earth knows when. Even the angels do not know. Only God the Father knows. When you see the leaves begin to form on the trees, you know that summer is coming. When you see all kinds of trouble, you can know that Jesus will return. The Bible tells us the good news of Jesus will be preached throughout the world before the end comes. How will he come back? Do you remember what the angels said to the people after Jesus went up into heaven? I'm going to read it now. It's in the book of Acts, verses 1 through 11. Uh, no, chapter 1. 
and verse 11. Okay. It says, Men of Galilee, they said. These are the angels. Men of Galilee, they said. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The same way. So how did he go into heaven? He went up with the clouds. So that's how he's going to come back, with the clouds. Wow. All right. He won't come quietly like he did the first time as a little baby. Matthew 24, verses 30 through 31, says when Jesus comes for the second time, people will see Jesus on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather his followers. Goodness, my dog is coughing. He's all right. Okay. Okay. What a powerful and dramatic entrance that will be. We'll be able to hear the trumpet, and then we'll be able to see Jesus coming on the clouds with all of his angels. Whoa. All right, another question. Who is Jesus coming for? Jesus said in the days before his return, people would not be looking for him. It will be like it was in the days of Noah and the big flood. Noah warned the people that God was going to judge the earth with a flood, but they didn't listen. They kept feasting and partying right up to the day of the flood. People will not be looking for Jesus, but will be going about their normal routines. Two people will be working up beside each other, and one will be taken, and the other one is left. Just like that. Some people will be grocery shopping, Others will be taking a nap or playing with their children. When Jesus comes back, his followers will go to live with him in heaven. Why is Jesus coming back? Jesus is the returning king and is coming back to rule over the world. He will restore the entire world to the perfect way God created it before sin messed things up. There will be no more sin or death. The devil and his followers will be sent to eternal punishment. He will be lifted up as king, and we will worship him. We will live in joy with him forever. Okay, we're going to start an activity right now. So I want you to stand up or sit down. If you think that a statement is True, you're going to stand up, and if it's false, sit down. So I'm going to read you a little bit before that. Okay. Right after Jesus left earth, a lot of his followers were confused about when he would return. Many of them thought it would be very soon after he left. The disciples wanted Jesus to set up an earthly kingdom after his resurrection and thought he would come back soon to do it, but that was not God's plan. Jesus warned his followers that many false teachers would come and try to lead the people in the wrong way. People wanted us to know the truth so we would not be tricked into believing lies about him. There are many things we don't know about his return, but he gave us enough information to be able to tell the difference between someone telling the truth and someone lying. I'm going to read some statements. If a statement is true, stand up. If it's false, sit down. All right, here's the first statement. Jesus could come back at any time. I hope you stood up because that one's true. Jesus will return in the clouds just as he went up. True or false? You should still be standing because that's true too. It does not matter how I live until Jesus returns. Oh, I hope you sat down for that one. That's not true, is it? It does matter how we live. Just like the people in the days of Noah, everyone will be ready for Jesus' return. Yeah, you probably should have stayed sitting for that one. 
that's not true. It says, just like Noah, almost nobody is going to be ready for Jesus' return. It's going to be a surprise to everyone. All right. Only Jesus' followers will go to live with him in heaven. True or false? Did you stand up? I hope so. Because that one's true. No one knows the time when Jesus will come back. True or false? Are you still standing? That one's true. Jesus promised to come back for us and he always keeps his promises. True or false? Oh, that one's easy. You should still be standing because that one, of course it's true. All right, you can sit back down now. It is so important that we make good choices every day. Good choices are the choices God would make. If you guard your little choices to be like God, then the harder choices will be much easier. Guard your heart and mind from bad choices so you can be ready for the returning King. So what should we do as we wait for Jesus to return? Jesus said we must be ready. He gave the example of a homeowner and a thief. If the homeowner knew the exact time the thief would break into his home, of course he would be ready and keep him from stealing anything in his house. We must be ready because we do not know the exact time Christ is coming again. Many people will not be expecting Jesus' return and will not be ready. They may think they have plenty of time to trust Jesus before he comes again, but he will come unexpectedly and then it will be too late. We are to be pure. 1 John 3.3 3 says that every man who has the hope that Jesus will return should purify himself because Jesus is pure. What does that mean? Well, we should keep our thoughts pure. Don't dwell on things that are wrong. We should ask God to help us keep away from sin. And if Jesus could come back any time, we want to be pure. We are to be patient. We are reminded in James 5, 8 to be patient and steady our hearts because the coming of the Lord is drawing near. When bad things happen, you can remind yourself that Jesus is coming back. When he returns, he will make things right. He will reward you for doing what is right. Don't get upset or worried about all the things you see happening around you, especially right now that we're going through kind of a scary time. Because Jesus promised, I will come again. Be patient and look forward to that big day. No one knows when Jesus will return, but we know he will come back because he promised he would. God always keeps his promises. On the next step section in your field notes, your next step is to be ready, be pure, and be patient until Jesus returns. Jesus is coming it is not something that any Christian should dread. The day that Jesus comes back, will be the happiest day in the life of a follower of Jesus. We're going to do our memory verse now. Our memory verse says, God wants every knee to bow to Jesus. Everyone will say, Jesus Christ is Lord. That's from Philippians chapter two, verses 10 and 11. Our craft for today is a coloring page that you can print off. You can have your parents print this off. You could also print off the field notes. It has some words on the back of the paper that you can color in. I hope you enjoyed our Sabbath school today. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the promise that you are coming again. We thank you that you are with us every day, 
We thank you that you are providing for our needs. We ask, Father, that you would keep us safe, keep us healthy, and keep us faithful to you so that when you do come home, that will come back to get us and take us home, that we will be ready. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful Sabbath with your families, and I hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye!